Well, this year, Reconciliation Month is commemorated under the theme United Against Racism and Gender-Based Violence and Other Intolerances. As we celebrate Reconciliation Day, we reflect not just on racial tensions in South Africa, but also on gender issues and how gender roles are changing in this modern world. The Department of Sport, Arts and Culture says the month should be dedicated to a national dialogue on racism, reconciliation, as well as gender-based violence and femicide. This under the existing tension and coronavirus, which has honestly exacerbated inequality in the country. Well, joining us to, t to talk about this is the Minister of uh, Sports, Arts and Culture, Nati Mtetwa. Minister, good to have you. Thanks very much for being our guest. Thanks, Leon, and thanks for having us. You know, today we obviously mark Reconciliation Day um, with what may seem like an, an all-time low when we talk about race relations and gender-based violence here in South Africa. Is this more perception or would you agree that coronavirus has perhaps simply brought this to the fore? I think uh, generally we, we still have challenges uh, in our country. And uh, the theme itself, uh, Leanne, it, uh, explains that uh, you can't talk of reconciliation in abstract. It has to be based on real uh, issues, uh, lived experiences of people. So that uh, when we uh, put on the table uh, gender-based violence and femicide uh, and racism and other intolerances, uh, says to you, uh, we say, let's, let's look at this uh, and not be cozy about it uh, and, 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 and not pretend what things are uh, when they are not. Uh, it's, it's only when we do away with falsehood that would be able to deal with this, uh, reconciliation. Now, reconciliation, uh, <clears throat> having been uh, the day itself and the man, having been around for some time, has to be assessed through the totality of challenges and breakthroughs in our society. How far our democracy has gone, for instance. How are we responding to what uh, TRC said? Because TRC said, over and above material things, which uh, should be uh, part of reparation, we also have to look at symbolic things like the transformation of the heritage landscape in our country. But mm -hmm. at the core of, of, of reconciliation is about economic justice. Yeah, it, it, it really is. And a lot of people um, still feel that, that, that they're just has not been an adequate reconciliation in South Africa. I mean, we're looking, we've asked that same question, how would you like to see South Africa reconcile, move forward, what things can be done? I mean, you talk about a national dialogue on racism, reconciliation, as well as gender-based violence and femicide. Talking, however, it, it doesn't seem to be doing the trick. And Minister, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems that action has to be taken as opposed to just talk shops. Well, uh, it's uh, you, you are correct. You are correct, Leon. <laughs> but remember, it's a combination of things. Uh, it's a co talking is important, Leon. Uh, you would know that uh, uh, after all uh, the fight, after all the engagement between the contending forces in this country, those representing apartheid and freedom fighters, in the final analysis, our democracy came about as a result of interaction. Of, 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 of conversation amongst us. So that is important. But it's not uh, the only way uh, we are dealing with issues uh, in our society. If you look, for instance, at gender-based violence and femicide, uh, talking is important in the sense that as the department, we, we launched the program, uh, which means it's enough, uh, where the major focus is on the boy child. Uh, we say uh, it's enough uh, conversation with my son mm -hmm. because we believe that so much has been left unattended to, particularly at that level. If you look at racism, for instance, um, the hate speech uh, justice department uh, is at an advanced uh, stage, particularly uh, to regulate uh, hate speech and, and racism and all those uh, intolerances. So it's not only talking even though talking highlights the problem. That is why we're saying that the conversation 
has to be truthful. The conversation uh, should not be, be about being cozy uh, with uh, one another, but uh, uh, being very uh, upfront uh, and unfortunate and, and on racism. Yeah. You know, Minister, you, you speak such truth because it really does. I mean, th these things are very, very important to talk about, but they're also an important issue that we need to follow by leadership. Now, one of the big things is the talk of reconciliation within, and, and I bring it up because it is something that I'm seeing being spoken to quite, quite a lot by viewers, is we look at the ruling party themselves and reconciliation within the ruling party and the divisions and the, the battles within the party are something that people look to. And, and they think if, 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 if the ruling party cannot be a unified voice, how do we as South Africa intend on being a unified voice? No, no, no. I, I think uh, we should uh, um, just pause there, uh, Lian, and, and, and understand that the political views will always be divergent. Mm -hmm. You will never have a monolithic, even if it's one party, even if it's one organization, a monolithic view uh, on issues. But um, in our own uh, way of doing things, uh, there are there are certain rules. There are certain uh, uh, bodies which, like the national conference, which becomes the uh, the highest decision-making body, as it were. Now, interpreting that would not then say that uh, <clears throat> there is a fight. There's never been. I, I I would want you to tell me just one political party which has always been, even here in South Africa, which has always been uh, at one and talking one and the same thing and so on. There's always going to be. Remember that uh, the, 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 a movement like the governing party today in South Africa uh, is a, is a, is a multi-strata, multi-class organization. So contradictions within that organization will always be there, uh, though the major thing, uh, is that the, the movement itself understand that it has that duty uh, of uh, leading society uh, towards a, 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 a similar strategic objective of creating a, 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 a united, non-racial, non-sexist, mm -hmm. democratic and proper society. And if you look at those things, um, not as cliches, uh, days like this, we, we sit back and, 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 and reflect on each and every one of those principles. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I hear your views, and it is important to have disparaging voices, different voices, different angles, and you're quite right. But when we look at how this filters down to the people, and let's take COVID as an example, because this has been a very tough time for South Africans, where we have seen the particularly economic and social gap growing even further now to those that have and those that have not. And when we talk have, we talk those that are able to get the education, they could carry on online, they could carry on. And those fortunate enough to have the ability and the economic, I suppose, uh, the economic balance behind them to do that, they were able to do it. But those that weren't, were not, and they've been left behind. And then we've spoken to a lot of PPE corruption that was happening behind and a lot of trust that went away. So we talk reconciliation in a country where a lot of the time South Africans are being taken advantage of. And these are important aspects to talk about because, you know, these are things that people that angers a nation, and then they start taking it out on one another. Would you agree with this to a certain extent? Uh, you see, firstly, uh, you would know that the, the Sixth Administration's uh, cardinal point is the fighting uh, crime and corruption. Uh, that said, um, it takes two to tango, uh, Lian. Mm -hmm. um, there is that uh, enthusiasm, that energy, which you guys have, particularly in the fight against corruption. And uh, if somebody is not a South African would have come to South Africa, would think that all is well in the private sector. Now, the moment you, you highlight corruption generally uh, in our country, you see, we have staying off. Everybody... I mean, hundreds of, uh, I mean, billions and billions of friends 
uh, it's it's not it's not an issue. Uh, the issue is about PPE, but government is responding to that, and it will continue to respond. But what I'm saying is that for the completion of a of, of a proper conversation, I think you should you should actually firstly take into cognizance that it takes two to tango, but also talk about private. It's like uh, it's, there is some shielding of the private sector, and uh, we are not then, and it's falsehood. We're not then going to be able to get to the bottom of 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 uh, of, of corruption of mm. crime in our, for instance. Mm. Mm. And and that's that's the problem. I think you know when we talk about that, and I, and I hear what you're saying in terms of your stance, but it does filter down into society, and that rift grows deeper and deeper, and that's and that's a problem because you know South Africans you're dealing obviously with a very battered past where we talk to apartheid, we're trying to reconcile and many parties saying that perhaps it does take more of a population and let's take the white population to, to actually do more and people asking for that population to do more than what has already been done over the last couple of years. Now take that and add to it everything that you're saying, money that disappears, money that should be given to better the lives of so many South Africans, and yet it, it is being misappropriated and misspent, and we're seeing state capture we, you know, being spoken about and trying to get to the bottom of that. And then again, we bring up the PPE issues, and this again divides society. So th there is so much, but... You know, we, like I say, we can talk and we could analyze this a lot, but reconciliation runs deep in this country and it seems to be more issues than we even address. Well, uh, I think we should take heed to Madiba <clears throat> when he spoke about the reconciliation in the seven parliament, that this project will succeed when both the, the perpetrators and victims particularly the perpetrators, understanding that they have a responsibility. They can share that responsibility. Because the problem in South Africa today, Leanne, is that uh, you have, uh, still have racism mm. without racism. So who are these people who made it a point that uh, uh, racism in the statute books in South Africa is supported for uh, 50 years and even more before that? that the people would say that uh, just to divert, that no, we support Madiba and everything and so on, but in action do something else. What I'm saying is that it's not only victims of the system uh, of apartheid uh, who should play their part. It's the entirety of the society, uh, which, uh, people, for instance, when, when, when the TRC said, on reparation, you also need symbolic reparation. Symbolic meaning that in the public spaces, uh, we have to transform the heritage landscape. But you can hear voices even today that when you say uh, Steve Beagle uh, or uh, Professor Sobu or Mandela should occupy public spaces, there are people who are opposing that. And yet they are saying that they want reconciliation. So therefore, hypocrisy and falsehood can never be the answer to reconciliation. We must be must confront the uh, issues uh, truthfully uh, without really... Uh, that's why I was saying to you, let's at all time try to bring the whole picture. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole picture because we will think that we're solving a problem, yet we're solving part of the problem, not the entire problem. Yeah. I mean, if, if we look at if, if we look at something, exactly what you're saying, and I, I mean, let's look at the TRC process, for instance, and we look at um, the, the, the reparations for victims of apartheid. And um, obviously, my question to you is, what has the, the ANC done? You've mentioned incredible leaders before you that that spoke to that justice, but what has been done since then? And surely we can see a lot more done in terms of corporations that were very much so responsible for these divisions and for what we saw happening under apartheid, and yet they've never paid the price. And, and this is a very big underlying issue within South Africans. There's never been a, a form of compensation for what has gone on in this country. 
Well, uh, it, it gets even more complicated, uh, uh, Leanne, as correctly as we're pointing out. It gets more complicated when you have people who are given an opportunity to come to the fore and tell the truth about uh, freedom fighters, South Africans who were killed uh, for just calling for freedom uh, as human beings. Uh, and, and those people are still around. And those people... Um, decided to undermine the process of, of, of reconciliation because TRC uh, was a building block, uh, TRC process was a building block uh, for reconciliation. So you, you are not surprised, therefore, at this point that uh, those people are being pursued uh, legally now because uh, it has to happen. I mean, people were given an opportunity. They have to pursue, but two, uh, in responding, as, as, as now the department, in responding to what the TRC is saying, we are looking and taking up uh, vigorously the issue of transforming the heritage landscape in our country. We've already briefed four provinces. We have briefed the National uh, Assembly uh, and, and going forward uh, to really uh, respond because it's not only... Uh, in material terms, monetary terms, but as uh, TRC said, symbolically, we need to be doing something. And we've started. We've done that over a period of time. It's not enough because the cultural uh, minority in this country still are a, a, a majority when it comes to the heritage landscape, for instance, uh, in our country. Yeah. But that, many other things of making the lives of people better are the asset to ensure that there is reconciliation in our country. Minister, I'm going to leave it there. Such an interesting conversation. Uh, I, I, I can imagine that this is pretty much so what today is about. It's talking about these issues and moving them forward. And, and I'm glad you've, you've availed us this morning. But now we want to hear from South Africans. We've got some tweets we're going to put up. I'm going to say goodbye to you. I'm going to urge you, Minister, to, to listen to them. That was the Minister of Sport, Arts and Culture, Nati M. Tetwa, talking to us about um, reconciliation. The address is happening today under the theme the President is giving it, uh, United Against Racism and Gender based violence and other intolerances. We asked you what you thought we could do better as a country, reconciliation efforts, what do we need to do to advance them? And these are your responses. And uh, let's see if the minister is still watching, but uh, Sakina, here we go. First, Pramor, who says the best is to stop celebrating Reconciliation Day because there's absolutely nothing to reconcile with when whites still hate blacks and blacks also hate them. Whites are given more preferences than the majority blacks. The closing of beaches in the Eastern Cape is evidence. A corruption club saying social integration must be enforced. Land must be given back to the real owners and the people must be allowed to participate in their own economy through wealth distribution, redistribution. So Ravile says uh, nothing really. It seems like there's one race forcing reconciliation and the other group is not interested. Lest we forget our past, we might as well accommodate each other. I am an African. True reconciliation will be when all what belonged to black people prior to the arrival of whites returns to black people. There's no other reconciliation other than that. All right, so there we go. That's reconciliation, well, according to South Africans. Yeah, still a long way to go. Yeah, that, indeed. Uh, the, the, that much is clear. But um, yeah, we need to start making strides. Uh, significant strides, yeah. that is. But uh, take care and uh, see what you can do in your little space.